Hey everyone, this is the third At The Gates developer playtest. Uh, I'm John Schaefer again, the designer of At The Gates. The format for this video is gonna be pretty similar to the last couple that we've done. Uh, the only exception being that uh, we're gonna break it up into multiple parts so that uh, in case you don't want to watch a multi-hour video all in one sitting, uh, you kind of have some natural stopping points that you can uh, use to uh, break up the viewing experience. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and start talking about some of the new things that we've been up to here. Uh, one that is noticeable here in the main menu, in the upper right you can see the version number. Uh, if you click on this little button, it tells you, um, or it shows you rather, the in-game change list or patch notes. And what's cool about this is that it automatically adapts to uh, what you've um, it, it shows you the most important changes since you've last played. So if you played the most recent version, it'll show you bug fixes, that sort of thing. But if uh, you haven't played for several months, it'll just show you the, the big picture thing, since bug fixes uh, generally aren't as big of a deal there. Uh, one of the other things in the main menu that I haven't talked about before is the group game. Uh, and this is the button here above the Play Random World. And uh, it, it's kind of, uh, it's inspired a little bit by uh, games like Spelunky where you have the daily challenge that everybody can play on the same world and challenge themselves and compare scores, that sort of thing. So this is kind of the same idea with At The Gates where uh, you have the group game where everybody plays uh, the same map and you can kind of compare. And this is useful in debugging as well as uh, I think um, when you are just playing for fun because you can compare scores and see how well you're doing compared to somebody else and a lot of times it's really different. Anyways, we'll go ahead and play the latest group game which is for March 14th which is uh, I think just a couple days uh, before this video is going to be posted and um, play the game uh, just as we've done. Just another random game. We'll see what we end up with. Alright, and um, Let's see, this looks like a pretty good starting location. Uh, we have some honey here, which will be good for food. Uh, we have several minerals, which is gonna be helpful if we need to uh, build tools, uh, weapons, those sorts of things. Uh, probably get something else like coal or stone as well. Uh, let's see, we'll look at the uh, rumored locations here. We have even more minerals, another mineral, some animals, some, some more bees, uh, a neutral farm which we can pillage for some food, which is good, and some more animals. So uh, no deserted locations, you know, AKA goody huts. Uh, so that means uh, a scout's probably not so great early on. Um, another new feature uh, that we'll kind of notice as we go along, um, it's not a huge difference, but uh, it kind of fleshes out the experience and that is score. So we, we've actually added a score uh, rating to the game because before you kind of would just play and, uh, the game didn't give much of an indication as to how well or poorly you were doing, uh, and the score is kind of a good way of doing that. Uh, again, kind of like the uh, group game, it gives you a way to compare how you're doing with other people. If you get a really, really high score, really low score, you know, that can be pretty interesting. Uh, so you can see the scoring metrics here, they've been up for a little bit. Uh, the main thing is clans, because uh, you'll end up with about 40 or 50 clans over the course of the game, but you also build a fair number of structures and you'll fight, so the more things you destroy or pillage, whatnot, uh, the better off you are. And like most of the other things in the game, it will uh, change as we go along, so uh, you know, take this list with a grain of salt for now. Uh, I literally just added it yesterday, and uh, <laughs> it uh, might not be a perfect uh, metric for, uh, for things just yet, but uh, we'll get it tuned, uh, like a lot of the other things in the game. All right, so let's uh, worry about the game itself. Uh, something else that you'll notice is that there's a, a, a new UI layout. So if you've watched the previous videos, uh, the resources here on the left used to be over on the right. Everything was kind of on the right. Uh, I've tried to balance it out a little bit more uh, and, and to group things that make more sense together. So these are kind of your actions uh, on the left are your resources. It's kind of reference information along with some minor actions. So you have like a system menu, um, you know, uh, strategic view where you can kind of you know zoom out and get a big picture look at what's going on uh, and then the note which I believe I talked about in the previous video but uh, you know kind of lets you uh, write notes to yourself uh, and you can refer back to them later they're saved in the game so if you have kind of like a, oops, a plan for what you want to do you can use that um, but uh, kind of the important stuff is over here on the right 
Um, so this shows your uh, clans, uh, clan number and clan limit, uh, and how fame factors into that. So fame has kind of been pulled out of the resources over into this. And um, yeah, uh, we should probably go ahead and get started on playing the game. So first step is usually to uh, go and check out what clans you have to start with. And you start with three, just like uh, the last video. All right, ooh, Conrad. All right, so level five in agriculture. That's that's pretty rare. So he uh, he is a green thumb. So he really wants to be in agriculture. Uh, Clan Rude <laughs> is uh, is uh, aggressive here. He does not want to uh, be in a civilian profession. He wants to fight some people. And uh, Alwyn here, he wants to do metalworking. You can tell by the blue background, and he's afraid of water. So he uh, might be a good miner uh, or a blacksmith, that sort of thing. So the f next thing to do is to kind of figure out where we want to position our settlement here in the early going. Um, we have a good number of things already within our borders, so we might be in pretty good shape here. Uh, you can see if I click on the, my settlement here and then mouse over other tiles, uh, the flags show me where my borders will be. Uh, pretty sure that's been in for a little while. Uh, and uh, I think we're using the uh, kind of like a terrible placeholder. This is still kind of a placeholder, but slightly uh, more presentable, so it's less offensive to the eyes anyways. Uh, so you can kind of see what you'll have if you move around. Um, I'm not sure we really want to move here at all, because if we do, uh, we're going to lose something. You can see, you know, even if we move south here, we'll lose that uh, mineral in the northeast. Um, we move this way. Yeah, pretty much everything. Uh, well, I guess we could move here, actually. Uh, but uh, the only problem is, as you can see in the uh, bottom right corner, uh, forests. Uh, require all your movement points to enter so we wouldn't be able to unpack this turn and we couldn't start training somebody so I'm not sure that's really worth it. Uh, we'd be able to get some of these forests over here on the right uh, within our borders and be able to use them for a, a logging camp or something like that but it's probably not worth it so go ahead and unpack here. Alright and now we have to decide who we want to train. Now we have a lot of things to figure out, so I think a surveyor would be good, uh, but one of the things that you'll notice if we go here and click on Train Clan, uh, if you've watched previous videos, you'll notice the surveyor's gone. So the surveyor used to be one of the early game uh, or turn one options. Uh, it's not possible anymore, you actually have to research them. Uh, and a difference there is that all of the foragers and builders, so I've, right now we just have access to foragers like the wood collector, the reaper, gatherer, hunter, etc. Uh, they can now survey on their own. Uh, they don't need a surveyor to actually do that. Uh, they're just not as good at it. So you generally uh, want to get a surveyor at some point to kind of expedite that process, but it's not necessary. So the, the surveyor is now kind of a cool, uh, almost a bonus, if you will, instead of... Uh, something that you just kind of have to get early on uh, and making it less exciting. So, uh, surveyor would be good, but again, uh, we don't have access to that quite yet. Uh, so, we have to kind of decide here what we want to go for early on. Uh, we have 10 turns of food here. We're going to lose one per turn, so we need to figure out uh, we need to find a source of food. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. And it looks like this honey might be all we've got. Uh, so this plant could be a source of food. Uh, we're not going to eat rocks. Uh, pretty safe to say. Uh, but we don't have any berries. We don't have any wheat. Nothing. You know, this, this honey is what we got. So that's um, indicative of wanting to get a gather for that. But it's also not super efficient. So if we mouse over our gather here, you can collect uh, one honey per turn. Uh, when foraging on a beehive, uh, and then if we go to our studying screen, show more, it shows an extra level here, uh, farmers, okay, so farmers can uh, build apiaries, I think that's probably the direction we're going to want to go, so, uh, especially since we have Conrad here, which is level 5, so that's a really big deal. Uh, that'll make him really good to train as a, a farmer or other things because we'll just be able to train him, you know, right away, one turn. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, pick our research, our studying here first. 
uh, instead of um, picking our training, which we normally would do. And now we do have to decide who we want to train here. Uh, and then we have some, shoot, uh, some other things going in here. Um, you know, let's see, what do we want to do here? I think I might go for a scout just to kind of see what's going on a little bit around here because it's just so much we don't know yet. Uh, there's not any uh, desert locations or goody huts, but I'm just going to suck it up. All right, so Rude's probably the best for that. All wind is afraid of water, which means crossing rivers with our scout, not so good. And we already have plans for Conrad, so we, we kind of want to make sure that we use him as a farmer to kind of build that apiary. All right, so um, let's see here. Uh, I guess I can show off one of the other cool features. So we, we kind of have an idea of what we want to do with Conrad. So uh, if you look at the tooltip here, at the very bottom it says right click to... Or right click... Ugh. <laughs> to uh, write a note to attach this card. So if we go ahead and do that, um, we we'll just write, uh, f you know, for apiary, let's say, and hit accept. And you can see down here, there's now a little, a little note, and uh, you know, a little sticky note as I'm calling it. And if you close the screen, open it back up, it's still there. Uh, same thing if you train them as a scout, you know, it'll stay there at the bottom. So this is a good way to kind of keep track of what you want to do because. At the gates is certainly a game where there's a lot going on and it can be hard to keep everything in your head at once so this is a good way to uh, kind of stock that away so you can worry about other things uh, so we kind of have marked conrad for what we want to do now and that's it for this turn so we will finish our turn All right, so at the start of this turn, we may switch clan's discipline. Uh, we just finished agriculture, which makes sense. Clan all minister into our tribe. I recognize that symbol. <laughs> Click on it. You can see here, Allman, vigorous, wants an active profession, plus one move point. The extra move point is great with a scout. I think this exact same thing happened with our last video. <sighs> <laughs> We're literally a turn later. We started. Uh, we started training a scout, and then the vigorous clan showed up. Oh well, <laughs> so it goes. Uh, oh well. All right. So uh, we may give a clan some free levels in agriculture. Uh, Conrad is already level five, which is just a ridiculous bonus here. Uh, All win is in metalworking. We'll probably go ahead and leave him there. Hmm. It's kind of hard to say. I think I'll go ahead and, go ahead and give this bonus to Allman because um, I would normally give it if, if Conrad was only just a, you know like a level two like Alwyn here. So Alwyn has a smithing lineage plus two levels, but Conrad has a green thumb plus five levels. So that's like the bonus one. That's a special one. Uh, if you were just a plus two, I'd probably give it to him so that uh, we could train the farmer faster. But he's already level five and. You know, we're not going to be able to train super, super high level professions for a while. So I'm just going to add it to Almond. And if uh, we switch him, you know, in the next few turns based on what what we get or find out, uh, that's okay. All right, state so profession. We finished uh, agriculture. Um, so I guess something quick I should mention. Uh, Reapers, they used to be called harvesters. Reapers are the profession that can uh, forage for wheat. Uh, barley, other crops. Uh, it used to be something you had to research, but it was just, it was so tough because if all you had nearby was wheat, uh, then you were kind of <laughs> screwed because uh, you would uh, you kind of have to beeline for them right away uh, just to prevent you from starving. Um, and we, we didn't really like that. So we, we've been making a lot of balance changes as the game has gone by. And that's, uh, you know, one good example of it. L lots of little small things. So I'm not going to go every over every little change that we've made since the last video, but uh, just be aware that's kind of uh, what a lot of our time is uh, spent on. Just uh, playtesting, seeing how things go, figuring out what works, what doesn't, and when things don't work, uh, we, we kind of make changes to uh, account for that. Okay, so we are deciding what to study again. i got to remember what I'm doing here. Uh, we're going to do farmers next because we kind of want to get that apiary up pretty quick. Uh, another feature, um, you know, kind of a convenience thing that we've added here in the uh, uh, 
in the study screen. The study screen is by no means finished yet, but it's, um, uh, you know, we kind of like on the gameplay side, we always want to be polishing, adding more, making the game easier and more fun to play. So one thing we've added is research queuing. So if we right click on a, uh, you know, kind of uh, knowledge here that will add it to the queue. So if we go back up to farmers here, number one, our queue, we're researching that, uh, studying that. And then uh, discovery is next. If we right click on surveyors here, which is something we talked about that we wanted to do, uh, then surveyors added to the queue as well. So that automatically stacks it up uh, so we don't have to remember it, which is pretty helpful when you're, when you have just so much going on that uh, you don't even you know, if you if you save the game and quit and come back later, it's like, what the heck was I doing? Uh, but this is, you know, between that and the clan notes, it's kind of a, a couple good ways to uh, stay up on what's going on and, and uh, keeping track of what your your strategy, what your plan was. Uh, this is something that uh, you know some of our playtesters have commented on, and something I found pretty useful as well. So it's uh, we try to sneak in things like that every so often when we uh, when we can afford to do so. All right, uh, let's see, do we have anything else we want to do on this turn? I'm thinking probably not. Uh, the only other thing is I'm considering whether to kind of go for logging uh, first instead. Uh, nah, I'll, I'll go ahead and roll. I'll go ahead and roll with this. We'll just keep moving. Okay, so Clan Wilmot has joined our tribe, and Wilmot is brown thumb, which means bad at agriculture, and afraid of animals, which means bad at livestock. Great. <laughs> Bonus. All right, so it goes. Uh, let's see here. So we have our new scout. Um, where to send him? We don't have any deserted locations to find. So that's not something we have to worry too much about at this moment. Uh, this really dry area out here, uh, there might be some potential for finding desert locations out there and getting some bonuses there because there's generally less, there's, there's fewer resources there. So uh, it's less likely another player is there. So I'm going to head in that direction and see. Oh, all right, well, <laughs> never mind. I was wrong. Uh, it appears that we have uh, a friend over here. Uh, yellow, I believe, is the van. Van. Well, I guess we'll find out. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> so much for that plan. Uh, hopefully, we'll find something. In any case, it's good to know um, that somebody's right there. So this is uh, kind of another one of the changes that we've been uh, working on since the last video. Uh, where players are now clustered a little bit more. We've been focusing on diplomacy. We kind of want to enhance that side of the game. And one way we've done that is by putting uh, a few of the players closer to one another. Um, in earlier versions, you would just be spread across the map randomly. And it just wasn't as, um, as much fun because a lot of times you would be all by yourself. You would never meet anybody uh, or you would meet them you know, super, super late in the game, and there just wouldn't be a diplomatic aspect to the game at all. Uh, this kind of spices things up a little bit. You can see there's only just literally two tiles between us, so that uh, could be a source of tension. But uh, if this is the Vandals, I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. Uh, uh, the Vandals leader, Ginseric, is pretty uh, friendly, but if I'm wrong, eh, you know, we'll see. It could be uh, a little bit trickier. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, now we finish off the rest of this turn here. Uh, we just finished our scout, so we can click uh, train clan. So there's, there's kind of two ways to decide how you want to train a profession. You can either click on the clan itself and then decide what you want to train them in. Or you can click the train clan button uh, if you know you have something in mind, or if you just ha if you don't have anything in mind at all, you can be like, all right, well, let me look at what my options are, and then I, I can pick somebody later. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that since we don't have a uh, you know, super concrete plan in mind here. Uh, all right, hunter, you know, reaper, gatherer. We don't really want either of these because we're kind of going for farms uh, right off the bat. Uh, wood collector is also a possibility, but uh, we have a really good spot for 
uh, wood over here uh, if we want it. Uh, unfortunately, the one that is the best is this tile because it's next to six forests. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, including the one it's on. But there's also mineral there, which we could build a mine on. Uh, so it's kind of a bummer <laughs> in that sense. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe we could pull that off because we could uh, train a digger uh, to forage that. Because a digger, uh, uh, all the foragers can collect resources without a structure. So if we uh, build a logging camp there with a logger, uh, you know, it could be the thing that we do next. Uh, then we would be able to uh, do both at the same time. We can't build two structures here at the same time, though, so uh, that is a factor to consider. All right, so we could do the digger, we could do wood collector. We already have a scout, so we probably need that hunter. We could uh, send the hunter after some of these animals. We have another one down here, I believe. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that yet. I'm going to go for the digger and uh, make all in the, uh, a digger here. So it's using up our tools uh, gradually uh, that costed one tool, as you can see here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get him started on this um, just to figure out what's there. Uh, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see kind of how it goes here. Um, this is an interesting start. The honey, the honey makes it pretty, uh, pretty tricky. So you can see our food is dropping here. We're up to 15 points, though. Yes, the points. High score. High score. Finished her. Oop. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've met Attila of the Huns. I guess uh, I was indeed wrong about the whole uh, Genseric of the Vandals thing. Uh, it seems that uh, we have met Attila. Um, and he has an important matter to discuss. Oh boy. All right. Well, I guess we should get around to that. So, uh, the uh, like I was saying, the diplomacy side of the game is something that we've been focusing on. And uh, let's see what he has to say here. All right. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> he seems friendly. Okay, so we can click show me, and that will show us the tiles that he wants us to stay away from. Oh my goodness. That is like the entire map. Wow. All right. And then right up in here. Wow, Attila. That is not cool at all. That is not cool at all. Um, I don't think we're going to agree to that. Uh, we could, but um, you'll see here, if we do agree to something, uh, the consequences of giving this reply are uh, we'll improve the mood of Attila, he'll like us a little bit more and is less likely to declare war on us, but our world respect will drop. And that's not good because world respect is something that factors into the mood of every other leader in the game. So if we do stuff that uh, lowers our respect by giving in, you know, if, if Attila is bullying us and we say, all right, you know, don't hurt us, we'll do whatever you want, everybody else is going to see that and say, well, come on, buddy, you know grow a backbone or something uh, and so there's there's a cost to agreeing uh, in addition to you know the implications there uh, something else that's important to keep in mind is that leaders will remember when you say things and that will factor into their subsequent behavior so if we agree and then just don't do what we say we're gonna do uh, then that's going to cause some problems. Uh, <laughs> it might uh, result in some tension with uh, Attila, um, to say the least. So we're going to go ahead and not do that. We're just going to reject his offer. So we'll go ahead and dis you know, turn that mode off so it's not uh, red all the time. Uh, it would normally disappear at the end of the turn. Uh, but I don't like looking at a giant red blob anyways. Uh, so, consequences of, of rejecting his proposal of us uh, leaving everything we own right away uh, are minus two mood, uh, indifferent to wary, so that you know he's not super happy with us, and increases the chances of him declaring war on us. Uh, he becomes more eager to go to war. Uh, and on the plus side, it increases our world respect. So, by kind of you know flipping it off, if you will, uh, everybody else hears about that uh, through the grapevine says, oh man, you know, John Schaefer just uh, said no to Attila. Oh my goodness, he's, he's so great. Uh, so <laughs> I, like, uh, I like being respected, being respected. 
That is so nice. Uh, so we will we will go ahead and reject Attila's demand. Your chances are you're running out of chances, friend. Ah, uh, yeah, friend. Right. Well, we'll see about that, Attila. What have you ever done? Nobody's ever heard of Attila the Hunt. Oh, all right. Well, never mind. Uh, maybe we should train some archers. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, um, so that's, uh, that's another factor to consider now. Uh, we, we kind of, uh, have our economic engine up and running, but, uh, unfortunately we've made a new friend, I guess you could say, uh, that we need to start paying some attention to, so. <sighs> Alright. Uh, well, what else we got going on here on the economic side of things? Okay, so we can now train farmers. Sweet. That seems good. Our uh, growing fame has convinced Clan Edelfried, aggressive and belligerent. Aggressive and belligerent? Really? Come on, buddy. Jeez. Cut me some, cut me some slack here. Um, uh, all right, well, so you can see here we just uh, finished studying the farmer profession. We can now train farmers. And um, uh, up here in the top, you can see uh, Discovery uh, is the new um, profession, or not profession, it's kind of a field that we're studying, and it will allow us to then uh, study other professions, actual professions, in that field, in the field of discovery, so things like the surveyor, so it's, uh, it was automatically in our queue, and off it goes, we don't need to think about it, it's kind of nice when you have a plan, uh, you don't need to, uh, pick things every turn. Sometimes I like doing that, but sometimes if you have something specific in mind, you can you can kind of get get things moving there. All right, so we have our digger that just was finished last turn. You can see by the flashing uh, radius here, we can move as far as these two tiles. We can't quite get there to that tile, unfortunately, which really stinks because um, again, forests consume all of your movement points for the turn, so we can move, you know, one, two, three, end the turn, move there, uses up all his moves, end the turn, then we can start foraging, or, uh, sorry, surveying, because we don't know what it is yet. That, I, I don't want to do that, that's two turns, you know, one, two, three, to actually get going. If we move here, cost two moves to move onto a hill, boom, we got one move left, let's get to identifying it five turns. We'll figure out what that is. So, change of plans, but uh, it's working out alright, I think. Okay, so... Let's see here. Well, Attila's that direction. That's Attila. Uh, we'll see if we can kind of uh, cut him off here uh, to the south a bit, and hopefully there's not another uh, tribe down this direction, and we can try to find some desert locations and pick up some bonuses along the way. Uh, nothing yet. Okay, so there's some water here. It's good to know. Uh, having an idea of what your geography is is always uh, pretty helpful because um, you know you can you can account for that when you're looking for resources when you're migrating if somebody's going to attack you, <clears throat> Attila. Uh, you know what, whatever the case might be. So it's 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 kind of good to know what uh, what your surroundings are. So. Uh, you don't always want to keep a scout out forever because uh, each clan is valuable. Uh, you don't want to waste them, but um, right now he's still uh, providing some value for us. Okay, so I think we just finished the farmer and Conrad. Train clan. One turn on the farmer. Okay. Look at that. That's what I like to see. Okay, what turn is it actually? Because um, building a farm here costs 30 timber. We only have 20. Um, this is another small change we made. You used to start with none, now you start with 20, so it's a little bit easier to kind of build a structure in the early going. Uh, let's see, late May. Uh, let's see, if a caravan shows up here next turn, that's something I gotta add to the screen here to kind of figure out or uh, to, to tell you when these caravans are actually showing up. I think it's early June is the next caravan, or the first caravan of the game. So it's late May, next turn is early June. Uh, and then we can buy some timber, get us up to 30, and then build the apiary right away. So as long as my assumption is correct, I think we are good to go. But uh, we will go ahead and do that in part two of this video. So uh, that's it for right now. Thank you for watching. We'll uh, catch up with you in part two of the video.